my name is Anthony Dempsey and I'm the team leader for the Clemson University ASME Student Design Competition Team. Each year, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers tasks undergraduate students with a challenge. This year's challenge was to transport water. However, the catch is that this water could only be transported using the potential energy of water. We were given a 50 centimeter size constraint. The vehicle may be manually loaded and unloaded with water. Other control functions such as steering, braking, and opening and closing of valves may be powered from an external source, such as a battery. For each milliliter of water unloaded, that is a point awarded to our team. We have a total of 15 minutes to make as many trips as possible and unload as much water as possible. Before we get into this year's design, I wanna give a little history lesson about our team. Last year, our team consisted of only three students, including myself. None of us had any previous robotics experience whatsoever, and it was our first time being a part of this competition. We wanted to take this challenge head on, so we taught ourselves about electronics, how to code Arduinos, and how to solder. However, due to ordering issues and other unexpected problems, we were not able to finish our vehicle in time and were not able to compete. But we were able to learn from last year's failures and we were able to flip them completely upside down for this year. At the beginning of this school year, we attended an outreach event where we were able to recruit a ton of new members, each with different backgrounds and different engineering experiences. We set out a plan for the year and when to meet deadlines for certain design and manufacturing elements. Because we had so many new members, we decided to split the team into two, with the intention of joining the teams back together towards the end of our fall semester. This helped allow each member to have a significant impact on the design process and ensured that a bunch of fresh ideas could be thought out. We spent our fall semester designing. Some of these initial designs included a spherical robot that would propel itself by offsetting water, a soft robot which would displace water due to hydraulic compression, a water-powered slingshot, shooting water out of a pipe, rolling a cylinder of water down a ramp, charging electric motors to propel a vehicle. With all these different ideas, some violated the rules, others were too far out of scope, and some would just flat out not work. Going into our winter break, we were worried that we'd never be able to pick an idea. This fear of not having a solidified design caused me to start prototyping, Eventually, after experimenting with Legos, we were able to get a, th a three-wheeled vehicle to work. Well, kind of work. Since this was our first prototype that worked, when we got back from break, we were ready to get right into it and start designing this even better. Our very first one, not made out of Legos, was made out of a thick wooden frame. This frame was held together by a bunch of L brackets and screws. When we were finally finished with our frames and attaching wheels to it, this was our result. So it didn't work out as expected. The frame ended up being much too heavy with the thick wood and all the metal pieces attached to it. Foam was the perfect alternative to wood as it's much lighter and durable. After learning how to use a foam cutter and gluing a bunch of pieces together, we were able to make a few different prototypes using this foam. They both seemed to work well with the simulated mass weight. However, our group found it very difficult to keep taking pieces of foam apart and putting them back together. In one of our iterations of the foam design, we used wooden wheels that were laser cut. We found it extremely easy to make a whole bunch of different designs using the laser cutter. Going forth, we knew we wanted to make a prototype out of it. When we finally pieced it together, it was, let's say, very flimsy. After refining our design a little bit, this was our result. Build montage. stands for water acquisition literally through elevated release. The water which we load into the vehicle will act as a weight which will pull down a pulley system. This pulley system will in turn pull the back axle causing the wheels to translate the motion forward. While this idea is very simple, it's very hard to make perfect. These are some things that were taken into consideration when designing Walter. These two angles are equal and so a little turn on this axle causes a giant rotation here. 
So when this turns once, we have the distance traveled is the circumference of the wheel, which is my, why we made the wheels large. We can't produce enough uh, torque from the weight of the box of water falling, so we had to use a larger shaft. And so you start off with the string being wound up at the shortest end, and then it goes around to the widest end, and then that's where you start off, where you have the widest part of the shaft torque at the beginning and then that gets the whole cart starting to move and then as it starts to move it moves to the string will move to a shorter part of the cone which will give you more distance per rotation so this thinner cone was the original uh, design for the shaft um, after doing multiple iterations of the prototype we realized that just a slightly thicker cone would work better so what we have here is we have our regular six channel remote um, and our six channel receiver. So on the receiver there are seven plugs, one's just for a power, but the seven are the six different channels that we can use, um, each go to different things. And as far as our electronics go, uh, pretty simple, we've got a three cell battery because that's what we have on hand. Um, running into a speed controller at the moment that converts it down to five volts for the receiver. Receiver then sends power and signal to all the servos so they can operate. So this could be useful if we were using them to, if we had like four servos holding up the water, or if we were using them to, if we had two of them in tandem and we wanted them both to break an axle at the same time, we had two different braking mechanisms. Anything we want to relate together, we can use them all at one switch. Along with these aspects, the water container, brakes, and steering are also being worked on currently. As we put the final few touches on Walter, it's great to reflect on the journey that brought us here. We're extremely excited to see what the other teams bring and can't wait to compete. See everyone in a few weeks.